Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I've been asked to do something extremely difficult because as a preacher teacher and also a pastor, uh, I would have my young pastors come in and say, Brother Lynn, it's Mother's Day. What do I preach from? I have no idea. Because you know that Mother's Day is a recent invention. That's only the last century, the early 1900s, that we officially began to celebrate Mother's Day. Did you know? Did you know that Hallmark says over the last 20 years that they've been kind of keeping a score? That Mother's Day is the, by far, by far, the day upon which they sell more cards than in any other town, almost over a billion. A billion Mother's Day cards will go out this year, this, this time. You know why? Because no matter how good, no matter how bad, we all love our moms. And we want to express in some way that we can our deep appreciation for the impact on our lives. And so we stand here this good day and as I have for many years struggled because quite frankly, I, if you have this testimony and you can say today, my mama brought me to church, not sent me. My mama prayed. My mama read the Bible. My mama sang hymns. My mama loved the Lord. My mama... If you can say those things, you're blessed. Because a lot of us can. And so as we stand here, it's a bittersweet day. But yet, good or bad, every mother has made an imprint on our lives. Uh, every mother has some way or another shaped and molded our lives. And you don't have to be a... You, you don't have to have given birth to a child to be a mother to a child. Because there's mother, there's many women in my life, they didn't give birth to me, but they were mother figures in my life. Those that did. Every Mother's Day growing up was complicated, man. Mama Gladys is my biological mother. Mama Bobby is my adopted mother. Miss Patty is my stepmother. And Mama Carolyn is my stepmother. My mother Gladys is dead. My mother Bobby is dead. Miss Patty is dead. And I've only got one left. And so on Mother's Day, when we would be going through the, the aisle, and I would be picking out and say, you think this would be okay for Mama Gladys? Yeah. You think this would be okay for Mama Bobby? Yeah. You think this would be okay for Miss Patty? Yeah. You think this would be okay for Mama Carolyn? Yeah. People would look at me quite funny. And so I, I, I get it. It's complicated at best. But as I look through the scriptures of both old and new, you can find those parts and parcels of scripture that show us an example of, of mothers, Hannah and Samuel. You can show others. But insofar as a scripture, it's kind of hard to come up with one, but we'll use two this morning. I was thinking through my, my stuff as I was making preparations for Mother's Day, and I, I found this I, 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 from several, several years ago. May I share it with you? What my mama taught me. My mama taught me logic. She said, if everybody jumped off a bridge, would you do it as well? She taught me about medicine. If you don't, if you don't stop crossing your eyes, they're going to freeze that way. Don't stick that in your eye. You may go blind. Don't stick that in your nose. It may get stuck. Don't put that in your ear. You may get deaf. Don't do that. You may get sick. She taught us about becoming an adult. If you don't eat your vegetables, you'll never grow up. She taught us about genetics. Yeah, just like your father. She taught me about our roots. What do you think? You're, you're, were, you born, were you born in the barn? She taught us about the wisdom of old age. When you get to be my age, you'll understand. She taught me about anticipation. You just wait till your daddy gets home. She taught us about justice. One day you'll have kids just like you. And then you'll understand why I feel like I do. She taught me about reasoning. Just because I said so is reason enough for you. Amen. Again, we stand here this good day and we give thanks and thanksgiving for the impact of our month upon our lives. And as I look through the scriptures, I want to, I want to share with you two. One of the Old Testament, a writer in Proverbs 31 was writing about his mom. Not about a wife, though he did, but about his mom. May I share with you his testimony? 
Who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is her price is far above any rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is early, even in the night. She gives meat to her household and even a portion to her maid and men servants. She considers the field. She buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds her loins with strength and strengthens even her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good. Her handle does not go out at nighttime. She lays her hand to the spindle, and her hands hold even the distance. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out even to the needy. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all of her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates. He even sits among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen. She sells it and delivers girdles to the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is found the law of kindness. She looks well to the ways of her household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. Listen, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuous, virtuously, but you excel them all. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. As you go through these twenty-some verses, this son of this mother, as he looks back over the life, the impact that her life made on his, if it was Solomon, and we believe that it was, he was talking about Bathsheba. And if you, if you look at the story of Bathsheba, some of us will start throwing rocks at her because we know the story of Bathsheba. We know that she was taken by David. We know that there was an affair. We know that he is the byproduct of that affair. We know that David, his father, murdered Bathsheba's husband. We know that there was a lot of things that went sideways, a lot of things that were bad, a lot of dysfunctionality, a lot of hurt and harm in that family. We know that. Yet in spite of all that went wrong in that household, Solomon writes about his mother and he uplifts and he upholds for every one of us these virtues of who she really was to him. It doesn't matter what your mother is to the world. It doesn't matter what your mother, mother is to others. It matters what she is before the Lord. And Solomon says, let me tell you about my mama. Let me say that I saw my mama get up early and I saw my mama go to bed late. I saw my mama plant a field. And I saw my mother harvest that grain. And I saw my mother beat that grain. And I saw my mother use that grain. And I saw my mother bake bread. And I saw my mother give that bread not just to her household, but even to her slaves and servants. My mother was a good woman. My mother did my daddy right. My mother was trustworthy. My mother was faithful. My mother prayed. My mother sang. My mother... And he delineates all the good of his mother. Then in the New Testament, we find this in Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 1 through 5. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of the life that is found in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank the Lord God every day to my service, my ancestors did, with a clear conscience. Night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears. I long to see you as well, so that I may become full of joy. But I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that now lives in you as well. As Paul looks at Timothy, and you read the rest of that chapter, Timothy is a young pastor over a difficult church. He has been in the trenches and he has been beaten down. The, the, the troubles of that city, the troubles in that church 
uh, are overwhelmed him. They've shaken his faith. They've shaken the foundation of his faith. He's getting punched drunk because of all that's going on. And he is on the fence of giving up and giving in. And Paul reminds him, you've got more than you think you do. I know your grandmother and I know your mother. I know what they were. I know what they believed. I know their faith. I saw evidence of their faith. I know their testimony. I know the tangible testimony that they had. And I'm telling you that you've got more in you than you think you do. If you look back over the life of your grandmother and you look back over the life of your mother, you can see and you can be reminded of the testimony of who they were and their faith and let it be something that inspires you and let it be an example that encourages you. And so look back over their life because I believe... I believe that what they had, you have. May I share with you out of these two scriptures some things that I believe are found about Mother's Day? The heart of a mom is caring. When I would go to my daddy with tears streaming down my face, having skint my elbows or skint my knees, my daddy would say, crying help it? Not so much. Suck it up. Suck it up. And I realized in that conversation that I wasn't getting a whole lot of what I needed. So I'd go someplace else. I'd go to my mom or my grandmother or my great-grandmother. And when I ran to my grandmother or my great-grandmother, my grandmother would bend down and she would take the hem of her skirt and she would wipe the dirt, the dirt off of my bobos and she would wipe the tears out of my eyes she would hold me close and she would whisper to my ear, it's going to be okay, sonny boy. And she would reach down and she'd make kiss my bobos but whatever it was, she would make me better. And I learned from my grandmother and I learned from my great-grandmother of a caring heart. You see, a mother, by doing those things, teaches us to be empathetic, to have empathy and to have sympathy. It teaches us to look beyond the facade, the facade and look into the hurts of others. It teaches us to be open and receptive to the hurts and to the pains of those around us. It causes us to consider their need. It causes us to see their hurt. It causes us to listen to the pleas and to the cries visually and not verbally and not that may be in their lives. And it allows us in some way to reach out in the care that God shows to all of us to show to them. I'm reminded of my grandmother cooking over an old stove, flour all over her face and, and, and splatters of gravy all over her apron. And I would ask my mama, Mama, what you making? And she would say, I'm making grace gravy. I'm making grace gravy. And my mama would be making stuff because somebody's hurting. Somebody's sick or somebody's hurting. And she's making chicken gravy or beef gravy or something. And she would take gravy and potatoes or take what she had or take what she could. And she would go and she would care enough to go into a hurting home. And she would care enough to reach out to hurting people. And she would care enough to go out of her way to let others know that somebody's thinking about them. To let others know that somebody cares about them. A mom, the heart of a mother is caring. A heart of a mother is also discerning. Most of us in our conversations, we ask, how you doing? And we hope and we pray to God above, they say, okay, so we can walk away. But a mother does more than that. A mother knows us so well. A mother knows our heart so deeply. They can look beyond the words and they can see the needs of our heart and they will respond, I heard what you say, but how you really do? And they'll stay with us long enough to let us respond. They'll look deep into our hurts and deep into our harms and deep into our needs. And they will reach out not with just a caring heart, but they'll look out with a discerning heart. And they can see whatever it is going wrong and they can meet that need with their love and compassion or whatever it is that they have to bring. The heart of a mother is helpful. My mama and my, my grandma and my grand. My grandmother and my great-grandmama never did for me what I could do for myself. They never made me a spiritual or emotional or physical cripple. They, made, they would never give me a hand out, but they would always give me a hand up. They expected me to do what I could, and they would stand back and let me do what I'm able to. 
and they never jumped in there because it would have been quicker and easier for them to do it themselves. But instead of doing that, they would step back and let me fail and be able to help me. They would let me do what I could, as I could, and encourage me. And by doing that, they helped me become independent. They helped me to have confidence in my health and myself. They helped me to understand I can do anything if I stay in the fight long enough. They helped me to realize just because I'm little don't mean I can't, for, I can't participate. Just because I don't have a lot don't mean I can't give something. Just because I'm not somebody else don't mean that God can't use what I am and who I am to help others out too. So the heart of a mother is caring and discerning and helpful and also persistent. I gave up on myself many times, but my grandmother and my great-grandma, they never gave up on me. They looked beyond who I was and saw who I could be. And my grandmama would always say to me, she say, Lynn, everybody climbs up fool's mountain, quit making a habit out of it. And I understand that. But my grandmama saw that there was hope in me. My grandmama saw that with God's help, I could be better than I was and I could become more than I at that time was. I, my grandmama's heart persisted because of her love. It persisted because of grace. It persisted because she believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. I believe in these scriptures. It reminds us that although a, a godly mother will face troubles, trials, and tragedy, that's part and parcel to all of our lives. When I saw my grandmother and I saw my great-grandmama, my grandmama never ran to a cell phone, though she might have gone to a, another phone. She never went to Ann Landers. She never went to a book. She never went to a newspaper. She never went to the TV. She never asked what others thought. My grandmother my great-grandmother, when there was a problem arose, she hit her knees and she asked her Heavenly Father for a little bit of help from all night. Because other people can be wrong. She never ran away weeping and wailing and going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. She never cursed God. She never blamed God. She never, she never ran away. She never did that kind of stuff. When troubles, trials, and tragedy came into her home, my mother, my grandmother, and my great-grandmother, the first thing they did was they hit their knees and they would reach up and grab onto the hem of the holy and they would say, I believe that God will make a way. I don't know what's going on, but I don't have to know what's going on because I believe that God will make a way. I believe that God will give us hope and I believe that God will give us help. And I believe that God can do anything and what I'm bound to do is to reach up and grab onto the hem of God and ask God for a little bit of help from all time. And so uh, mothers, godly mothers face trouble, but godly mothers pray. And godly mothers trust the provision of God. I've seen... Our kids will never, my kids don't remember it, but I remember when their mother and me went hungry, so they would, I remember going fishing for our dinner and going fishing for our supper. I remember working day and night on a, on a conveyor belt. I remember working three churches and three jobs so that we could have food on the table. I remember working one time for food just so I could bring home to the family. I remember a lot of things that they never will. And I didn't do it because I have to, but I'm saying I did it because I, I've seen my own mama and grandma do it out. I've seen my mama, when the table was set, they let us eat first to make sure that we had, and they did I've seen my mama go in threadbare clothing so that we could have something more than we than they had. And so I learned those lessons because my mother trusted, my grandmother trusted, my great-grandmother trusted in the provisions of God. And they will say, it ain't what others have, it's what we need that matters. And I don't need the best, but I know that God will give me what I need. God won't give me what I want, but God will give me what I need. And we'll just trust God to it. And they did. And by doing that, I learned some lessons. And so I thank God that my great-grandmother and my, my grandmother has impacted my life in ways that I probably will never really have. We can say a lot of things, but I thank God that they love the Word of God. I thank God that my earliest memories, I would go to my grandmama's house. And when I went to my grandmama's house, although I'm a preacher's, 
kid. I didn't know how to pray because mama, we either lived with mama or we let her live with dad. We didn't live with both of them very long. And so when we went to my grandma's house, mama and papa at night time before they went to bed, we'd bend beside their bed and they'd pray. And when we would go over there, my grandmother, my mama would say, say, boy, come in here. And I would go and she would make me kneel down beside her bed. And she would fold my hands and put my hands underneath my chin. And she would say, we're going to pray. And then Mama would pray and then Papa would pray. And she would say, now you pray. <laughs> well, I didn't know what to pray. So I, I'd say, well, what do, what do I say? You tell God what you need and you thank God for what you've got. And then you thank God that you've got what you need. <laughs> and so as I knelt beside my Mama, I learned that prayer matters. And I saw my grandmama pray, and I heard my great grandmama pray, and that matters. And so a godly mother prays, a godly mother reaches out and holds on to the hem of the holy, trusting that God will meet our needs. Mothers teach us a love of Scripture. Mothers exemplify faith in a tangible testimony. Again, there's, there's, there's many things we could say, but I want to end it with this. I was preparing for the newsletter and Mother's Day and all that, and, and I ran across Jimmy Dean. And, and I like Jimmy Dean, not the sausage, but his songs. And one of his forgotten songs, but most memorable songs, is this one about his mother. Let me read it and share it with you as we close. I owe you, Mom. Many people look through their wallet or their pocketbooks and way down at the bottom past the credit cards and baby pictures and so on. You usually find a little old piece of dog in your portrait. I was cleaning out my wallet the other day and ran across a bunch of IOUs. Some of them 35 years overdue. And you know the funny thing? All these IOUs are owed to one person. And I kind of felt that maybe now would be a pretty good time foreign account. Mom, I sure hope you're listening. Sweet lady, I owe you for many things. A lot of services like night watchmen, for instance, lying awake nights listening for calls, calls and cries and creeping for all boards and me coming in too late. Boy, you had an eye of an eagle and a roar of a lion, but you always had a heart as big as a hand. I owe you for services like short order cook, Chef, bacon. We're making sirloin out of hamburger and turkey out of tuna fish and big old strapping boys out of leftovers. I owe you for cleaning services, for daily scrubbing the faces and the ears, all work done by hand, and for frequent dusting of a small boy's pants to try to make sure that we let a spotless life. For washing and ironing that no laundry could ever do, for drying the tears of childhood and ironing out the problems of growing up. I owe you for services as bodyguard, for protecting me from the towers of thunderstorms and nightmares, and too many green apples. And Lord knows I owe you for medical attention, for nursing me through measles and mumps, bruises and bumps, splinters, and even spring fever. Let me not forget medical advice. Things like if you keep scratching that and never get well. If you cross your eyes, they're going to stick like that. And probably the most important advice that a mother could give, board, make sure you got on clean underwear just in case you're in an accident. I owe you for veterinarian services, for feeding every lost dog that I dragged home at the end of a rope, for healing the pains of puppy love. And I owe you for entertainment. Entertainment to get my household going through some pretty rough times. For wonderful productions of Christmas, for Fourth of July and birthdays, for making make-believe come true. And you did it all on a limited budget. I owe you for construction work, for building types and confidence, hopes and dreams. And somehow you made them all touch the sky. For cement, to, cement together a family, so we stand the worst kinds of shocks and blows. For laying down a good strong foundation to build a life on. I owe you for carrying charges, for carrying me on your book for the necessities of life that a grown boy somehow just had to have. Things like a pair of high-top boots, 
and a little pocket on the side for a jackknife. And one thing, Mom, I'll never forget, when there are two pieces of pie and 300 people, you're always the one who decided, well, I'm not really that hungry anyhow. These are just a few of the things for which payment is long ago due. And that person that I owe them to worked very, very cheap. She managed by simply doing without a whole lot of things that she needed herself. My IOUs so add up more than I could ever hope to repay. But you know the nicest thing about it all? That she marked the entire bill, paid in full, for just one kiss and four little words. Mom, I love you. I wish that I had spoken those words more. I said earlier that I wish I could bring my mama back just for a few minutes. Because when I go to the grave and I, I say now what I should have said while she was living, because I was too angry at her, and too immature, and too stupid, to have said what I should have. And so now when I go to the graveside of my mama, I'll say I, I love you. I should have loved you more. I should have told you more. I should have acted like of back and down. So if your mama's alive, no matter how good or how bad you may think they are, you ought to thank God for them. If you can, you ought to thank them. If you can, you ought to tell them. If you can, you ought to show them. If you can. If you can't, like some of us, maybe it would be okay if you choose to go by the grave and tell them. I believe they can listen. I believe that God still allowed them that privilege. You tell them now what you didn't tell them before. Tell them now what you wish you had a told them before. Tell them now what you wish that death hadn't taken away from you. Tell them what you want to tell them. Tell them what you need to tell them. Tell them what you should have told them. Happy Mother's Day. We stand as we sing it. Close again.